Hello and welcome to <laughs> Seven Days of Right, stop. This stupid intro stuff stops now. The last few months you've just been doing the stupidest things. It makes no sense. One of the intros was just explosions and loud noises. And a Dalek. And the stupid YouTube rewind references. Of course we're not going to be in it. We're not big enough. Yes, alright, fair enough, but... And there have been a few stupid noises. Yeah, well... There's not even any point to an intro. Just get straight on with the video. I've never liked the intros, really. Couldn't agree more. Cutting off the intro was meant to be a temporary measure because we were going to make a better intro sequence, which you never did. Yeah, okay, fair enough. I didn't. But I will. Probably. Maybe. Will you, though? No, I'm getting someone else to do the intro. No, 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 no. Please, right. I, I will do better. I will I will stop cutting off the- Hello there, guys, and welcome back to another installment of Trey the Explainer, Seven Days of- Actually, I will be leading this new Seven Days of Science. I'm Henry, and I will be your new- Welcome to Nature's Compendium's new outlet, Seven Days of- Edge! Edge will be taking over Seven Days of- I think you'll find that I'm the best choice for hosting Seven Days of Science. So anyway- Welcome everyone to Wick Raptor 105's <laughs> But none of you can art. Not at least as well as I can. I'm Joshua Knuppe and welcome to 7 Days of- I'm clearly the best choice. I'm the biggest and therefore best channel here. Welcome to Tier Zoo's new series, 7 Days of- Guys, it's not just about who's the best or the biggest. I don't want this to turn into an argument- Hey, I'm Joe. No one's ever heard of me. I don't even have a YouTube channel. In fact, I'd be a terrible choice for this. Okay, well don't undersell yourself either, that's just silly. Just checking. You're gonna pick me, aren't you? Do I get a say in this? Of course he's not gonna pick you. My videos are so much better. No, I think he said that didn't matter. Come on! There's only one real choice. Yeah, and it's me. It's not you, you're just some random guy. I think we should choose based on who does the most live streams. That's stupid. You've just said that's because you do the most live streams. I could do more live streams, if that matters. No. Look, I just want someone to- I could do it. Although, to be fair, I'm more of a designer than a voice actor. A designer? Well, that gives me an idea. I think I will be doing seven days of science after all. But I'd hate to waste an opportunity, so... Welcome, Welcome to, to seven, seven days of science. Science. science! That was a complete mess. <laughs> Starting off the news this week, and indeed starting off 7 Days of Science 2.0, is what we started with for the first episode of 7 Days of Science, SpaceX. Last Sunday, the SpaceX team performed a crucial test on their road to sending astronauts to the International Space Station for NASA, an in-flight abort designed to pull the crew away from the main rocket in the case of an emergency. The company promised viewers that the test would be quite the spectacle, and indeed, after the Crew Dragon separated from the Falcon 9 booster and rocketed away using the Super Draco engines, it lost its previous stability and tore itself apart into a giant fireball. The test was considered the last major step to having NASA certify Space Sector's capsule as safe enough to carry astronauts to the ISS, something that hasn't happened from America since the days of the Space Shuttle. In other news, a study published by the journal Nature has identified the Yarrabooba crater in Australia as the oldest asteroid crater on Earth, and has suggested that it may have been what tore the planet away from an ice age 2.2 billion years ago, making the crater half as old as the planet itself. Because it's so old, it's not quite visible to the eye, but the crater can still be determined by scientists measuring its magnetic field and geologists, who say the crater is 43 miles, or 70 kilometers, in diameter. Starting off the paleontology news this week is the discovery of the first fossilized skin from a giant prehistoric penguin. Discovered in the middle Eocene aged rocks on Seymour Island, Antarctica, this specimen is comprised of an articulated wing which displays traces of mineralized skin. This remarkable fossil displays the connective tissue as well as the anatomy and density of the feather follicles and even a pattern of grooves created by the feather shafts resting on the skin. This is therefore the first example of a neonathine bird to preserve three-dimensional fossil evidence of skin covering, in addition to being the most complete wing specimen for this particular species of prehistoric penguin. And now over to Ben with the, we the, the, di with the dinosaur news. He's got the dinosaur news now. 
Thanks, Doug, and nice suit today, by the way. Also in the news this week is a great new pterosaur study. This paper has described discoveries made at a trackway site in France, which seems to have finally answered some long-standing questions about the terrestrial abilities of non-pterodactyloid, or more primitive, pterosaurs. Before now, no tracks had ever been referred to this grade of pterosaurs, even though pterodactyloids, the more advanced pterosaurs, have been known for a long time to have been capable of walking on the ground and being pretty good at it. So assumptions about non-pterodactyloid terrestrial abilities were based on studies of their anatomy, and generally it was agreed that they were mostly tree dwellers that were bad at walking. However, six new trackways have now been referred to these pterosaurs from this site in France, showing that, at least at this stage during the late Jurassic, these reptiles were actually good walkers. So despite their tracks being very rare, suggesting these basal pterosaurs perhaps did not often walk, they were indeed very capable of doing so. And, last but not least, there's been some new research on the end Cretaceous mass extinction which would seem to solve once and for all the true cause of this event. As you may know, at around the time that the KPG extinction took place and all the non-avian dinosaurs died out, there was both an impact from an asteroid and a great deal of volcanism, and both of these events relative importance to the extinction have been thoroughly debated. Now, this new study has used carbon cycle modelling and records of paleotemperature to figure out the timing of these events, finding evidence that the massive volcanic outgassing started and ended before the impact occurred, and only the impact coincided with the extinction. So, the asteroid impact was the main player in the Cretaceous mass extinction event, however the paper also writes how the volcanic gases which were released may have shaped the evolution of new species that appeared just after the extinction. So, as you can see, there's been lots of great paleontology news this week. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Ben. Your own suit isn't so bad. Thank you. No problem. Yes. Anyway, that's it for this week. Thank you for watching this week's Seven Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it, and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. A massive thank you to everyone who took part for the intro this week. That's Nikki, Adam and Max, Trey the Explainer, Henry the Paleo Guy, Nature's Compendium, Edge, Rick Raptor 105, Joshua Knipper, Tierzu, and Joe. I'll put links to their channels in the description and in Joe's case, his blog. These guys have been really great collaborating on this. Please give them your love and check out what they have to offer if you haven't already. Also in the intro was Michael, who had redesigned our logo, which looks absolutely fantastic. It's been an absolute pleasure working with him on rebranding our channel. He's done the intro, our new channel art, the newsroom background, the end card. I mean, that's all I can think of for the moment, but there's probably more. He's an amazingly talented guy, and I'll put a link to his website at the top of the description so you can pop over there to see more of his work. Thank you to everyone who stuck around for the 100th episode of Seven Days of Science. I hope you have a wonderful week. And... As always, we'll see you on Sunday.